You're sitting up nice and tall in your seat. Your eyes are on me. Your good listening ears are open. Put your hands either on top of your desk or in your lap so that you're not tempted to fidget and play with something, okay? Um, we want your full attention while I'm here. All right, so today um, I wanted to spend some time. I've been coming into every classroom, kindergarten through fifth grade, to talk about already growth. Last year, when you were second graders or third graders, um, I had all those kiddos, each grade level, come in the cafeteria, and we talked about brain growth. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah, that's what we did last year. This year, I wanted to come in and follow back up. We've taken the second round of testing. Let's see exactly where we are and what we need to do to continue to improve. That's what I want to talk about today, all right? Yes, sir. So our first thing is we're going to focus on the word growth. I want you to think for just a second in your mind, what do you think of when you think of growth? What do you think of when you think of growth? Yes, ma'am. When I think of growth, I think of a plant from a seed all the way to a uh, plant. Great, great connection. Okay, what about you? Getting taller. Getting taller. Someone else? Yes. Getting smarter. Getting smarter. Getting better. Getting better. Those are all great things. Yes, ma'am. Okay, all of those things can be growth, can't they? So I thought of some things, and I like to use picture cues sometimes to help me. You can click to the next page. First thing, someone else said plant. Yes, that's something I think about. A plant grows. But my question is, what does a plant have to have to help it grow? What does it have to have to help it grow? Yes, ma'am. Um, water. Water. Sunshine. Sunshine. Soil. What's in the soil, though? If it's just soil, plain old soil, it's not going to do anything. Those roots are reaching down to that soil to get something. What are they trying to get? Mm, not the dirt. What are they trying to get? Air. What? Air. They have to have some air. Um, the, um, like the water or the moisture in the dirt. Mm, looking for something else. Right. It's the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals that are in the soil that those roots are reaching down to get, okay? If a plant doesn't get good sunlight and water and nutrients, is it going to grow well? Okay, and sometimes it may not grow at all, okay? It's going to wilt, wilt and wither away and die, okay? That's what happens with the plant. But So it has to have certain things in order to make it healthy. What about animals? We have baby animals, we have adult animals. What do animals have to have to grow? Talk as a table group. What, is your, what does an animal have to have in order to grow? Okay, three, two, one. Eyes back on me. What do animals have to have to help them grow? Back here at this table, someone. Yes, sir. Food. What kind of food? Okay, plants or some kind of meat, right? We have, there's two words for that. Animals that eat plants are? Herbivores. And plants or animals that eat meat are? Carnivores, that's right. So they have to have one of those two things depending on what type of animal, that animal they are, okay? What else do they have to have, Emily? Water. water. So they still have to have water just like, uh, just like plants do. Yes, sir? Air. Some air, okay? So we know there's specific things those animals have to have in order to grow. Or again, they're not going to be a healthy animal, are they? Well, what about people? Someone talked about getting taller earlier. What do people have to have in order to grow? Yes, sir. Oxygen. Oxygen. Yes, ma'am. They need to go outside and get exercise. Oh, we all need to exercise, don't we? Okay. Water. Water. What were you thinking? Food. Food. Okay. Should I have my Butterfinger candy bar and my Mountain Dew every day because I really, really, really like it? No. no. So what kind of food do I need? 
What kind of food? Vegetables and fruits. Vegetables and fruits, breads and cereals, milk and juice, things from the food pyramid, and it needs to be a good balance. Yeah, I could have my Butterfinger candy bar sometimes. I could have a pop sometimes, but guys, it needs to be a good balance. I need to have a good healthy lifestyle, okay? That's what growth is all about. So when we talk about growth today, I want to focus on the brain growth again. Your brain has to have a good balance of things that we pour into it to make it successful, okay? Your teacher, and you may not realize this, but the great thing about teachers is they go to college and they get special training to learn strategies that can help get that information into your brain and make it stick. Okay, that's what their job is. I always kind of think teachers are a little bit magicianish. Okay, magicianish. I don't think that's a word, but being a magician, that they're constantly looking for ways to get that brain to open up to pour information in. Okay, which is a great thing. But that's teachers, not everybody can do that. Teachers are trained in that. They go to college for several years. They also have to have training every single year to stay updated on the new to, newest strategies and newest things to help you learn. So Miss Musselman back there has a very, very, very special talent. Okay? All of our teachers here in our school and teachers anywhere are people who have been trained to do those things. Okay? So we're going to work with that brain growth. Your iReady test that you took in, in August and at Christmas was to check for that brain growth. In August, yes, it should have been down here a little bit. At Christmas, should it be higher? Yeah. Yes. In May, when we take it again, it should be even higher, okay? That's what we want to see is constant improvement to know that your brain is growing and developing like it should be. So you're prepared for the future. So I thought about what do I need to tell kids to help them know what you need to do? What do you need to do to help you have more brain growth? First thing I'm going to tell you is you need to be in school every day. Every day, and you need to be on time. If you get here an hour late, you show up late, you're probably missing your reading block. Am I right? Yeah. If you check out early, you're missing your... What happens in the afternoons? Blast. Blast, so some extra intervention time, some science time. You're missing key instruction, so you need to be here um, every day. Now, I know when I was a third or a fourth grader, there were times I was tired, and I didn't want to come to school, and I'm like, Mom, can I please, please, please stay in bed for a little while? Or, Mom, can I please stay home today? Has anyone ever done that before? And the truth is, we should be excited about coming to school to get more information to make us as smart as we can be. If we sit at home, we're missing out on our magician teacher back here who's trying to pour that information into your brain. Okay? So please don't be getting, uh, playing hooky and staying home and not wanting to be in school because school is a great place to be for you, for you to get as smart as you can be. Also, listen to your... Teachers. Teachers, when you guys go to special classes and when you go home in the afternoon, Miss Musselman is in here working all the time creating lesson plans. Have you ever heard her say anything about her lesson plans? What that is, is she has a book, and she's writing in that book, and she's saying, okay, in a reading, this group of kids really need this skill. They, they haven't gotten that skill yet, so I'm going to make sure and do this lesson. And this group of kids right here needs some help in math, so I'm going to make sure and do this lesson with them. Again, she's planning. She's that magician. She's finding that strategy that works best for this group of kids. So she's going to do that. And, you know, this group of kids didn't get this so much. Let me back up and reteach that skill. She does that every single week. She makes a whole week lesson plan. Every day before she goes home, she looks at that plan and says, okay, this is what worked really well today. Let's try that again tomorrow or let's extend that. She's constantly juggling and adjusting her schedule and adjusting her instruction to make sure she's meeting your needs. So every single thing that she does is intentional. She does it on purpose. Okay. Hopefully, and I'm sure, I know Miss Musselman, she creates some fun things for you to do. But everything can't be all fun, can it? 
Some of it just has to be practice, and that's okay. But she does everything she does is intentional, okay? When she's teaching, she loves for kids to ask questions. Has she ever asked you to create a question or ask her some questions about things? Yeah, yeah sure she has. I see your target over here on the, board, on the wall. You all create questions sometimes. The smartest people that I've ever met are people who ask lots and lots of questions. Why? They're curious. They want to know more. Give me more. Give me more. Give me more. That's what they want. They want to know as much as they can. They want to get as smart as they can be. It's great to ask questions. It's also important to ask questions. Please don't be shy or embarrassed. If you don't understand something, please ask. Okay? You're missing out if you don't understand how to do it. Don't take it from a friend's paper. Don't just try to put any answer down. Go ahead and try, and if you can't do it, ask that question. Miss Musselman's trained to help you, okay? So make sure you do that. Next one, complete the work she gives you. I've already told you she's the magician. She's planned. She's prepared. She's intentional in her planning. So if you're at Mr. Cameron's group, Mr. Cameron even goes home and he studies too. Did you know that? He's excellent. He helps back here. Miss Musselman's table, Mr. Cameron's table, the independent centers that you do, they're all intentional. So if you work hard and you do them like you're asked to do, your brain is going to grow. Okay? Last one. I'm sorry, there's two more. Do your... Talk as a table group. What does Ms. Musselman ask you to do for homework? Three, two, one. Eyes back on me. Miss Musselman, she sends home homework. That terrible teacher, she's just trying to torture us, right? No. No. She does send that homework home, yes. What does she send home for you? What does she ask you to do? She uh, tells us to do spelling and math. Spelling and math, like writing your words or studying your words, those kind of things, right? Okay. What else does she tell you to do? Uh huh, uh huh. And read a book for twenty minutes. Hmm. So spelling's important to her. Reading's important. What else, Kate? Reflex. Also, why? Yes, she knows that those math facts are that important. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yes, perfect. So you can take that home and practice, right? King, I heard you say something a while ago. What's the other thing that she, you can do? You can take something home and then bring it back. Oh, yeah, you can get a blank piece of paper from here and then uh, do... Mm. What about something that you didn't do so well on? Hmm. Reading. Okay, if you didn't do so well on it, what could you do when you take it home? And bring it back for a higher grade. Yes, you can do it again. You can increase that score and bring it back for a higher grade, correct? Okay, so she gives you the opportunity to look back over your work when there is a problem and fix it and turn it back in, okay? Miss Musselman, again, magician lady back here, knows all those strategies. She knows that that practice at home makes a huge difference in your brain growth. She doesn't do it to be mean. No teacher does that. They do it because they know that you need the extra practice. Practice makes perfect. Perfect. That's right. Last one. The other thing you can do, and Miss Miss Musman's already asking you to do it, is to read as much as you can. Everything. If you eat breakfast at home, read the cereal box. If you're driving down the road with mom and dad, read the signs. Um, constantly, you can be reading. You can read with a friend. How many of you all have younger brothers and sisters? Your younger brothers and sisters would love for you to read to them, okay? Yeah, my sister if you read to them, that's going to help them and it's going to help you, 
okay? That's a great thing to do. Reading with your mom and dad. You could read a page, they could read a page, or you could read out loud to them. Read to your mom while she's cooking. That'd be a great thing to do. She'd probably love to hear that. Um, you could read by yourself. You could read to your pet. You could read to a stuffed animal. The main thing is you are reading. It doesn't matter how it's that you're reading and you're practicing because practice makes Perfect. and we want our brain to Love. that's right so let's look and see where is Miss Musselman's class right now I'm gonna scroll down here a second it'll take me just a second to get there I have all the classes on here there she is all right, so let's look at your class. And I know you're third and fourth grade, so I combined those scores for you, Miss Musselman, but I could tell you the breakdown the other way, too. I am very pleased with the progress that I'm seeing with this class, okay? But we talked about that in the fall we should see a score here, that at Christmas we should see a score that's higher, and by the end of the year we should be up here, right? So this is your fall score in reading. This is your winter score. And this 80% mark, actually I put 100% on your all's because yours is so high already, that we want to show that spring growth, okay, where we want to be. So in this class, I kind of want to do a visual with you. I'm going to have you stand up in a minute for how many kids those bars represent. So in reading, in August, this fall one right here, we had 15 kids in this class that were on their grade level, that's third or fourth or above. So 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, you eight stand. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All of you stand. That, it's a quick stand, you stand. That was what we had in August, that many. That's awesome, okay? Now we still have some people in numbers that didn't get there, okay? That doesn't mean it's you all. I'm just using this as a visual, okay? In reading at Christmas, you had 19. Stay up, you, six, you 15. 16, 17, 18, 19. Does that look good? Yes. It looks very good, okay? That looks very good. Still got some we need to pull up. And that would be, you two now stand up. This would be what we need to get to the 100% mark, what we need when it comes to May, okay, when we take this test again. But you're pretty, I didn't count you, did I? You stand up too, okay? Everybody that's making that growth of those big jumps in reading, okay? All right, sit back down. Click a page. Let's look at your math. Does math look as good as our reading? No, it doesn't. And I will tell you, over the whole school, except for one class, um, everybody's math was lower, okay? And we have already talked as teachers at different grade levels of, you know, guys, we need to do some work as teachers. We've got to figure out something different with our math because we're not there yet. We've got to do something different to help you guys. So we've got some big jumps to make in math. As a class... In August, we had eight kids of this class that were on grade level or above. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was at the beginning of the year. That looked very good? Okay. At Christmas, lots of, lots of improvement. At Christmas, you got to 16 kids. So you had six 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Look what growth you made. Was that good? Yeah. Yes, that looks great. Now the rest of you stand up. In May, we've got to have everybody. Okay? We want to make this huge frog jump. We set the goal at 80, but honestly, I think this class can get higher. I do think you all have that potential. And I want to see you do that. Okay, sit back down. I wanted you to visually see exactly how many kids that means because we've got to help each other. We need to encourage each other to give our best and work hard. If you see someone that's getting frustrated with their learning, hey, hey, you can do it. Give them some encouragement. 
Okay? This is a real sweet class, so I know you can do that. So again, what do we need to do? Being here, listening to your teacher, doing your homework, um, doing the things you're asked to do, asking those questions and reading. Those are all things you need to do. You also need to give some more effort. Okay? Giving it everything you've got it got. Not worried about what other people think. Not worried about drama. You need to worry about you and you getting you're making your brain grow. That's what you need to be focused on. So I brought a little video with me today. I'm going to read it to you as it plays, but it does focus on that whole idea, that whole idea of putting forth a little bit more effort, okay? So let's watch this one today. At 211 degrees, water is hot. At 212 degrees, it boils. And with boiling water comes steam. And steam can power a locomotive, that's a train. One extra degree makes all the difference. And the one extra degree of effort in business and in life separates the good from the great. The average margin of victory for the last 25 years in all major tournaments combined was less than three strokes. The margin of victory between Olympic gold medal and no medal at all is extremely small. In the 800 meter men's race, the margin of victory was 0.71 seconds. That's less than a second, guys. At the Indy 500, the average margin for victory for the past 10 years has been 1.54 seconds. The winner took home over a million dollars, second place 600,000. Big difference in how much they made there. It's your life. You are responsible for your results. It's time to turn up the heat to get what we've never had. We must do what we've never done. Attitude. The only thing that stands between a person and what they want in life is the will to try and believe that faith to believe it's possible. Kindness is one of the most beautiful comp compensations in life. We can never help another without helping ourselves. Belief fuels enthusiasm and enthusiasm explodes into passion. It fires our souls and it lifts our spirits. Focus. Having a simple, clearly defined goal can capture the imagination and inspire passion. It can cut through fog like a beacon in the night. Perseverance is not a long race. It is many short races, one after another. You are now aware. You now have a target for everything you do. Okay, escape out of that for me, bud. Just like this target right up here, you now have a target for yourself, for your class. Your class, I showed you the 80% and 100% growth that we're looking for in this class. But can Miss Musselman do that alone? No, she's got the magic. She's got the strategy. She knows what to do. But you've got to put forth the effort. So we've got to get that extra degree to step it up and give a little bit more effort so we can move our train. Can we do that? Yes. Absolutely. My fifth graders that I saw earlier today, they said, turn up the heat. Could y'all say that with me? Turn up the heat. There you go. That's what we're going to do. We're going to put a little bit more effort forward and we're going to get those that brain growth to really be strong. Okay? You can you have so much potential in this classroom. I know you can do it. Miss Musselman, anything you want to add? No, I, I think you're right. I think there's a lot of potential. There is a huge today. amount of potential in here. Huge. I know you can do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so we want to go from just hot water to 
steam, right? Boiling to steam, okay? To push our train forward. We need to, our school was already at that blue status. We've had a blue party. We've celebrated. Um, some of you all fourth graders were at an award ceremony this week. We want to maintain that, but it's going to have to be. We're high, so it's going to take a lot of force to keep us up there. And I know you can do it. Okay? I love you guys. Thank you for being great listeners today. I've enjoyed being here. Can you...